Mark Bordeaux, the peasant in Nolita. Thank you so much for having us. Absolutely, bro. Welcome. What are we going to be making today? Today we're doing one of my favorite things to serve, our spring chicken cooked over the rotisserie with wood-fired romesco. Oh, so we're not cooking it under a brick. <laughs> <laughs> not today, no bricks here. I cook your chicken under a brick all the time. I love it, but this is a different way to do chicken. Believe it or not, funny story, when we first opened, you know, people kept asking for the brick chicken, the brick chicken, and I was like, you know, if you want brick chicken, you go to the other restaurant. We're taking advantage of this beautiful fire behind you. Yeah, for sure. And we cook it nice and slow over the rotisserie. Yeah, why cook it under a brick when you could have it rotisserie? We salt it overnight. We put a little marinade that has parsley, rosemary, Calabrian chilies, olive oil, and we let it sit uncovered overnight so you get this almost like peaking duck effect. So what do you do with these chickens once they, you pull them out of the marinade the next day, what, what's next? So once they've dried, as, as we can see them here, we take the wings and you just fold them underneath. So the, the, and the tips don't burn? Yep. And then we'll hit them with a little more marinade right before they go on there. This will help with the, the color of the skin. So now we're gonna impale them. Okay. Right? At the end of the day, in Italian, it's <laughs> pollo impalato. So this is probably how cavemen were, were cooking with their yeah. open fires and using a stick instead of a yeah, you know, piece of stainless steel. Yeah, it's something very primal to do this style. Uh, I, I never feel like more of a human being <laughs> than when I come home from a, a night at Peasant. To be honest, I'm like the luckiest chef in the world now because I have Restaurant Mark Forgione, I have One Fifth, and I have Peasant, and they're all very different styles. Yeah. So, you know, I get to kind of wear a different jacket, per se, Yeah. Uh, you know, a couple times a week. And this, you've always wanted to cook with fire, right? Yeah, fire has been something that has just always been like, not to sound cheesy, but it's like always been in my soul. You yeah. know what I mean? My original restaurant was supposed to have a wood-burning oven, but we ran out of money, it was my first restaurant. <laughs> Peasant was actually my favorite restaurant. I used to yeah. live on Mulberry Street, uh, which is a couple blocks away from here. And the fact that this is like my my playground is, I literally pinch myself every night when I walk out the front door. So next, we're again, this is like a half a truss. If you didn't truss them, they would kind of flail all over the, the rotisserie as they as they go down. So, so truss this up to help it cook even. Exactly. Always go twice. Yeah. And then you see how the breast just kind of like it kind of worked up. Yeah. Was there a little bit of a learning curve to to learning how to cook with fire as opposed to how you've been doing it most of your career? A hundred percent. I found out the first day you got to light the fire in the morning. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then not only do you have to light the fire in the morning, you have to keep the fire going throughout service. Right. Yeah. Your customers don't care if your if your fire went out. You know what I mean? There she goes. Another beautiful part about cooking with fire is just patience. So then we've thrown that on the rotisserie and for about how long does that go? Well, with the fire the way it feels right now, I'd say this is probably gonna take about an hour, hour and 15 minutes. So while we're doing that, we're gonna go ahead and build the sauce. Yep, wood-fired romesco. You know, romesco is, it's not traditionally Italian, it's more of a Spanish pesto. It's, you know, all your usual suspects. You have uh, roasted red peppers, tomatoes, Calabrian chilies, almonds, bread, garlic, we add a little raisins for sweetness and vinegar and some extra virgin olive oil. And how do you start that? So each one individually is gonna go into this cast iron, which we've had heating in our, in our wood-burning oven. And we'll start first with the red peppers. And so then that goes for about how long? I would say with the way that the fire feels right now that each component, maybe a minute, two minutes, okay. you want to get like a little bit of char, yeah. a little bit of that kind of blistered flavor going on. And this is where you're adding smoke at each layer yeah. and eating fire at each layer. Yeah, as you can like see inside there, this oven has uh, not just fire and smoke, but it's also got a 25 year old patina in it. Mm -hmm. And uh, I have no way of proving it other than the flavor, but I think this oven really has like its own unique flavor to peasant. So you want to make sure that we have, you know, nice color on the outside here, but then also there's like a nice glaze on the bottom of the pan from all the juices that kind of released. Now it turned almost into like roasted pepper syrup. And so what do you do with that next? So now we're just going to let it chill and we're going to use the same pan to continue to cook the other ingredients. Now we add in the whole tomatoes. Yep, tomatoes, skin on, a little bit of salt and pepper, a little olive oil. And then the tomatoes we're going to put in the back corner over here. 
So now the all the bread and almonds go in. Yeah, the bread and the almonds. So we have a sourdough starter in house all the time. Just a little bit of olive oil. This is gonna go a lot quicker than the other things and you gotta keep an eye on it. Tomatoes are ready to come out. I'm gonna do the garlic in the same pan that I did the tomatoes. As with everything else, we'll put a little salt and pepper. Now the garlic is the one that you really gotta be careful with because toasted garlic and burnt garlic are yeah. two totally different flavors. <laughs> and in this oven, it'll go from perfect to burn like that. Like that. And if you notice, the tomatoes and the peppers I had pushed all the way kind of in the back, close to the fire. Yeah. Now that we have the garlic and the breadcrumbs, we'll keep them a little closer to the mouth. All right, so this garlic is ready to go. So that's the color you want right there. Just beautiful. that beautiful brown on the outside, the aromatics, doesn't smell burned at all. We got everything out of the wood-fired oven, and now what do we do next? We take everything that we've cooked, get it all together. Yeah. This is a Calabrian chili paste. Amazing. Extra virgin olive oil. Beautiful. All right, these are just very simply some raisins. And then what, that's gonna add that little bit of sweetness you said yep. to it. And it, what did you soak those in? Red wine vinegar. A little salt and pepper. And as you can see, right, we've been seasoning the whole time as we go. Yeah, yeah. Every you got to layer the flair. It's my favorite time. Christmas present, by the way. Watch this. <laughs> <laughs> this wood fired. You know, it's like really getting down. Animalistic. This, it's like let me see my little electric. This thing. is all the technology we use <laughs> at, at, at Peasant. All right, so now the only thing really left to do is plate this thing. Okay, let's do it. <laughs> but at Peasant, it's not as straightforward yeah, it's as just like, plating something. It's like, there's not just a plate, <laughs> there's a medieval torture device. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's hard to, you know, not make a joke when we look at this thing, but um, <laughs> if you've ever done like a, a beer can chicken, you know, beer yeah, can yeah, chicken? Yeah, yeah, no, exactly. Kind of the same concept. What do you do with the romesco now? So now we're gonna take um, just a little bit of uh, chicken stock which we actually um, you know, make from rotisserie bones. And then we'll add that romesco. Right to the stock. Right into the chicken stock. So it almost, it almost acts like cream, even though obviously there's no yeah. dairy in here. If you, if you look at the sauce. But there's collagen from the stock and it gives it some body. Yeah, if you look at this, it's almost like a soup. Now we're just gonna put this to the side and we're gonna gently let it warm right on the side of the grill. Now it's oh, we got time it. to get our chickens. So coming off the fire here. Look at that. That is beautiful. Yeah. So again, kind of, you know, like, I'll continue to say it, but you know, just like very primal kind of like, yeah, <laughs> you know, man versus beast kind of <laughs> situation. There's one. There's two. And then if you just kind of smell in there, you get all like the smoke and the chili. Yeah, and, it's you know, beautiful. Garlic from the marinade. So we've got your other medieval torture device, super hot. Well, it wouldn't be medieval torture if it wasn't super hot. <laughs> we go from a Spanish sauce with the Romesco, Spanish Inquisition right here. Right, like, how did we get, how did we get here? Right? So you just impale the guy right there. And then... And now, remember we talked about before how yeah. it kind of like thickens like as it... As it hits that heat. Right. You get that knife right down in the middle, and that's it. Because we cooked it so slow, it kind of falls literally right off the bone. So they, people are tasked with that themselves, or do you do that no, before it comes No, the out? servers do it. Then I remember the last time we did a show together. Yeah. We were drinking wine, so I figured. <laughs> Salud. Love it. Salud. I love like like that raisin. You get just that little bit of sweetness in there. That's like so nice to like balance out everything. You're getting the heat of the Calabrian chili. It's it's really outstanding. Yeah, and the, the vinegar and. You know, the smokiness and the gaminess of the chicken, it's, you know, like I said before, I, I want people that are sitting at that table to feel like they're sitting at a fire when, when they yeah. get to eat the food. There's just something to me about being able to smell the fire and taste the fire when you're in a restaurant like this. Well, it's outstanding, Chef. Thank you so much. Thanks, Bob. See you next time. Next time.